Hey, welcome to Caching in the Northwest. This is the podcast from the birthplace of geocaching right here in the great Pacific Northwest. Now, it's Thursday night at 9 p.m. Pacific. I'm Chris of the Northwest, and we're going to talk about geocaches and geocachers from here and all around the globe. So while you're watching videos of zebras walking down the city streets, we'll mm. be caching in the Northwest. Yes, indeedy. And tonight we're talking about the WSGA Geo Tour with MC3 Cats. He's from the WSGA, don't you know? Hey, guys. Welcome back. Thanks. And live audience, jump in that chat. We want to hear from you and share your thoughts, your feelings, uh, input of all kinds. Yeah, okay. Land Monk is not so sure about the feelings part. Well, let's see. But it is time to bring in our touring tamarind. Some say he supports recycling by sleeping in a cardboard box. And others say the state of Oregon considers him an invasive species. All we know is he's called a land monkey. Oh, uh, you know, timing is everything, eh? Um, and, and I say, first of all, very funny. Thank you. Uh, very good intro this evening. Um, and uh, I have been editing my YouTube videos like the, this week, getting them ready. I'm, I'm hoping to have them either this weekend or early next week ready. The ones but, about the cardboard box? No, the ones oh. about the WSGA Geo Tour. Oh, okay. And uh, how we completed uh, completed two of them in one road trip. Um, so perfect timing for tonight's episode, but also we dipped into the state of Oregon while we were doing the uh, Southwest one because... I mean, you're you're right across the river. You may as well. Mm -hmm. You may as well. You may as well. May as well. That's right. Uh -huh. Sure. Mm -hmm. And they let you back out. Prove me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyways, um, looking forward to this chat, uh, Mister Three Cats. Good to see you. All I got to say is, what did you do to tick off the state of Oregon to become an invasive species? I don't know. That's <laughs> tough. Pretty much That's an classified. invasive species anywhere not in British Columbia. So. <laughs> oh, the, there you go. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't especially tick anybody off. It's just my natural inclination. Yeah. Hmm. I'm glad you're working within your giftings. I am. Yeah. I am. Good stuff. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, looking forward to having this chat. Like I said, little little teaser. I've got a video about this coming out. So, I'm, I, I've got a few questions I'm gonna be picking your brain about uh, MC3 Cats right. as we go through this, because we are really enjoying working our way through this Geo Tour series. And I think a lot of our listeners are as well, and so I think we're gonna have a lot of great questions from the chat as well. But before we get to any of that. A quick reminder that we appreciate the support of our patrons who helped. To, did I say that patronizingly? When I said patrons who helped to keep this podcast coming each and every week. Thanks to Land Sharks, one of our corporate Denali level sponsors. That is L A N D S H A R K Z dot C A. Um, and, uh, you know, check them out online. They've got great specials going on all the time on their online store. And hey, if you're planning a trip, up to Victoria, Vancouver Island area, um, uh, as I have even received an email earlier today from one of our patrons who's planning a trip up there and said, hey, uh, what do I need to know about Victoria? And so if you're that person, know that I have seen your email and I'm compiling my thoughts. I will get back to you tomorrow. Hmm. But, thoughts uh, compiler. Yeah, hmm. a thought compiler. Um, a Pascal thought compiler. Fancy. Yeah. All right. Um, but yeah, definitely make a plan to visit the Landshark store if you're coming up there. And talking about places to make plans to visit, how about gold country? Dun, dun, dun. That's right. Our other corporate Denali <laughs> level sponsor, Gold Country Geotourism. Just look at those views. Look at that amazing location behind me. That's You want to go there and geocache, don't you? Sure. All right. Well, there's two geotours. So go on out there, enjoy, find geocaches, earn coins and cool stuff and meet wonderful people and see amazing views. Download the app, check it all out online at exploregoldcountry.com. 
All right. And, uh, you know, if you want to know more about supporting this show and you want to get me to shut up so you can hear the rest of the show, well, just head on over and click that Patreon link on the cashingnw.com website. Wait, is that really all it takes? Did we get any new patrons? No. I guess we'll find out. So you're going to continue talking. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. It was too easy. You just tossed it out there. Hey, folks, it's time for the glow. You may ask, what is the glow? What is the glow? What is the glow? What is it? Wow. Who even That's knows? Very nicely done. Hey, what's the glow? Oh, <laughs> we were doing an <laughs> ASMR podcast. Okay. Uh, what is what hey, is yo, that? tell me about the glow. Yeah. Oh, you are so hip. Hey, the glow is the geocaching log of the week. So whether you read it or whether you wrote it, we want to hear about it because great logs simply make geocaching better. Now, we need each and every one of you to send in an email, a recording, something into feedback at cachingnw.com. You can also call into 253-693-TFTC and show us how you glow because we need your glows. Look at us. We're hardly glowing at all. Barely. Hardly a glimmer, much less a glow. Don't have that seasonal glow on yet. No, not at all. It's the, it's the winter times and the lack of vitamin D. That would be a reason right there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> we are getting just a little bit more sunlight every day. So true. we'll just keep glowing a little more. Well, let's see. Tonight's glow came to us via email from BC Rock Crawler, who I see in the chat is active. So glad you're here tonight, Rory. It's for a virtual geocache called Qualicum Beach Birding Virtual 3.0 Virtual Cache. There's a mouthful for you. Mm. That is GC9 Papa 8 Golf November, don't you know? And being a virtual cache, he expounds a little bit on the theme of the cache, which was, if you missed it, birding. So the log says, today this virtual took on a little more significance for me, BC Rock Crawler. I've had a growing curiosity about birding that was started from a seed planted many years ago at the Pacific Biological Station in Departure Bay, Nanaimo. I was out at the fish farm that is moored to the Brandon Islands. Uh, I was out there at a fish farm doing some repairs, so sitting in the small shack on the float, having coffee with the tech, Bob, who ran the farm, under the direction from whoever who was doing experiments at the time. These were open net pens with some out in the open and others within covered floats. Some of the experiments dealt with types and amounts of feed, some with growth rates under the direct sun and under the shade of buildings, types of viruses that the salmon would catch within the pens, types of treatments for the viruses. These days, all those types of experiments are carried on land at the bio station so that the parameters can be more closely controlled. Again, getting back to the seed planting part of the log, if you hadn't noticed, I can go off topic uh, go off topic on tangents quite easily. So we were sitting there, these very black birds with pale brownish legs, yellow eyes, black pupils with an orange ring around them, and a long, bright orange bill appeared on the island. I asked, what the heck are they? Probably in language that cannot be repeated here. Bob said, they're black oyster catchers a very common shorebird that is part of the waders grouping here on the coast of North America from Alaska to the Baja Peninsula. I was dumbfounded. This won't be a surprise to anyone who knows me. Why have I not seen these before? I've grown up here in BC, never far from the ocean, spent many hours fishing and playing on, in, and under the water. Up to that point... I could not remember ever seeing them. Of course, now I see them all the time. Move forward two plus decades, and during that time, I got to know a few people at the station who were birders. I would talk with them over coffee, and that little seed was starting to take root, so to speak. When I retired, one of those who I spoke to the most about birding gave me a copy of the Sibley Guide to Birds a hefty reference guide to most of the North American birds. It has great drawings and information, but for me, it was a bit intimidating, so it's remained on the shelf gathering dust for the past two years. Things have changed. 
rapidly by my dad. It began with an event hosted in Nanaimo by Geo Birder from Ontario, whose profile page says, Some days I'm a birding geocacher, and some days I'm a geocaching birder. Two fun hobbies that are even more fun together. As he'd be here for some time geocaching along with birding, I asked if he would mind meeting me over a coffee so I could ask him for tips, tricks, and advice about birding. We met yesterday. He was very helpful and gave me a good shove down the pathway to birding. I now have an app he suggested on my phone. It has a neat feature of keeping track of a life list. Every time you see a bird and tell the app when and where you saw it, if you haven't entered the bird before, it adds it to the list. I had two yesterday, and today I added three more. This cache is a perfect example how both worlds mesh together well. While here collecting the needed information, I saw American crows, gulls, I need to work on how to tell the difference between the types of gull, American widgeon, black oyster catchers, somehow fitting, and I heard a bald eagle. Nice. So there you go. Geocaching can complement, coexist, and do all kind of things, you know, with other hobbies. And sometimes they work together really, really well. Exactly. So that's cool. Sounds like dad is in... Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. My dad is into birding. And uh, there was a movie out oh, a couple of years ago. I think it had Robin Williams and Steve Martin in it. And it was called The Big Year. And the idea of a big year is to go out and to, you know, spot more birds than you ever have in any previous year. Ah. And uh, it was quite a good movie. Very cool. All right. I'm hearing some static. Is that just me? I think, I think that might be you. Okay. Hey, folks, if you want to talk in or contribute into tonight's show, and by the way, thank you, BC Rock Crawler. Birding and geocaching are two things that go together like chocolate mm -hmm. and peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you want to add to tonight's show, use the hashtag tour. And of course, um, if you want to bring up something in the after show, use the hashtag FATAS. That's F-T-A-S for the after show. We also have, we're, we're not going to stop doing some of these other hashtags. Use the hashtag podcast baking to tell us what you've got cooking tonight. And hashtag podcast drinking to tell us what you're sipping on. What you're sipping on, what you're sipping with. What, hmm. what are you drinking tonight? Oh. Oh, I, I hear the bells at the shore. Something rings a bell. I think the wheels are falling off here. So what is uh what's Land Monkey drinking? I'm curious. <laughs> it's uh Woodford Reserve double oaked. So it look it looked uh, warm and swarmy. It is warm and swarmy. It's yeah. nice. Oh. Warms my tummy while I'm talking. There you go. Double oaked. Hmm. All right. It's got a double oaked kind of taste. Hey, podcast baking is popcorn. 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 There you go. Like toaster. Nothing wrong with that. I like popcorn. Yeah. That can be an entire meal. It double is. oaked popcorn. Many times. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure all of us have been there with that popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just honey, I, just last week. There you mm -hmm. go. It's all right. I, I was distracted earlier by, I, I swear I was hearing white noise in my headphones, so I apologize for that. But uh, anyways, um, we do have some news. Let's uh, jump into this. So this is a really interesting story. Maybe some of you caught this story on the the, the wire, on the uh, hot news. Uh, this <laughs> <top week. laughs> it's just in. It's just in. That's right. Um, but uh, a really interesting story that combines uh, certainly one of my favorite hobbies um, along with uh, a little bit of safety. So uh, what, is, what this is all about is how can you use your drone to save your life? Well, uh, Casey Ryan, his dog and a friend went to Willamette National Park. Now, I believe that's in Oregon, correct? Mm-hmm. Right. Well, you're no longer allowed. Yes, right. that's no right. longer allowed. Well, and, I, and, and, I, and I think it's Willamette, but Willamette. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you're but right because the... there isn't an extra I in there that I was pronouncing. Yeah. Willamette, but I really want to say William. I okay. know. Willamette. It's it's Willamette. a it's a small William. It's a Willamette. 
It's a, it's a <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, these these folks were in Willamette National Park along with their dog, and they became stranded uh, after offering to help pull out another stranded motorist because, you know, no good deed goes unpunished. That's right. Um, so he uh, reversed himself into a snow ditch and was basically screwed. Um, needed to send a text, um, but could not get reception. So what did he do? Well, he uh, tied his mobile phone to his drone, sent it up a couple hundred feet, and was able to pick up a signal and got, <laughs> got a message out. So uh, he says, uh, I had actually seen that movie Fall recently, and my friend had remembered watching on the news a couple of years ago that there were people dropping phones into jails for inmates. We realized we just have to get as high as the mountain, he said, to get the signal out. So uh, rescuers were then sent to find him, and uh, they also rescued the other motorist who'd started the whole ordeal. Ah, okay, so we are assessing blame here. Of course. Um, and, and As one oh, does. Yeah, as one does. And apparently the other motorist had been stranded for several days. Well, I guess Ryan's lucky he didn't get eaten uh, when he showed up to help. All right. It's going to very easily turn into the Donner party or something, but uh, it didn't. Subway Mark is offering to teach you uh, Oregonian. Ah, <laughs> I will definitely uh, need that because I clearly yeah. cannot say it. Does that help if he puts an extra couple of M's in there? <laughs> Willamette. Willamette. Lamb. No, see, I still did it. Will yeah. Will I don't know. It does does not compute. Yeah, well. <laughs> That's All okay. Right. We have trouble with some of those uh, BC names. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like the big river and valley here where Geo Woodstock was. <laughs> you can never say. Okay. Did did you guys see the link I sent you to um a yeah, video? I, I I did a Jeopardy video, right? Yeah. And that was you know, who was the the founder of a college and a river in BC. And they said, um, um, Mia, Mayim Bialik said, Frazier. She did. Well, and I'm like, no. She plays a smart person on television. She was wrong. I know. <laughs> and I yelled at the TV. I go, no, it's Fraser. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you for yelling at the television, Chris. So I just want to let you know, I've learned that lesson. It only you, took me what two and a half years. Now I'm ready for a next one. What what should be the next lesson I should learn? Um, will I'm it. I got I got will I'm it. Okay, okay. Well, you're I'm, really doing well. You're ahead of me. No. I, I and, made the William at. Will I'm it. Will I'm it. <laughs> will I'm it. <laughs> That's what's on the countertops. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're definitely not invited back to Oregon. Okay. No. No, that'll get you kicked out real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then if I go back to the New England area, there's all kinds of weird names back there. I'll, I'll mangle terribly. So, Like the word that's spelled like Houston, pronounce, but pronounce Houston. Oh, oh, Houston Street, yeah. Hey, Seabeck uh, Tribe pulled up a couple of my favorites. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Puyallup is the only reason I knew how to, how to pronounce Puyallup because growing up, every summer on TV, I heard... You can do it at a trot. You can do it at a gallop. You can do it real slow so your heart don't palpitate. Just don't be late. Do the Puyallup. Exactly. But the next one, I have no clue how to pronounce that until I visited there and had somebody correct me. Because I said... Sequin. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Sequin. That's Not how it's spelled. Close. No. Squim. Yeah, it's Squim. Yeah. Silent, uh, silent E and U, uh, apparently. Why, I don't know. I don't. No, no um, there's no why. So it's no. silent also. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Wet Coaster has another good one there right after Seabeck Tribes. Uh, let's grab that one. There's a BC one for you. How would you pronounce that, Chris? Quesnel. Jim? Uh, I would look at it and assume it was French and say Canel or something. but <laughs> That's a good one. Three cats? Uh, probably Quesano. It's Quinell. No S. Silent S. Of okay, course. so I, I got the silent S part correct. You're 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 closest, Jim. <laughs> yeah. Oh, too funny. Yeah, but like, right. you get back to like Winnipesaukee and things. Really, we could, <laughs> we could. But uh, oh yeah, 
Staying here in the Northwest, there's a name in the center of the state that most people can get okay pretty much, Yakima. Mm. Right? We can get that one. And Saturday, this coming like just two days from now, there's a cash machine there. It uh, didn't get a final uh, dinner event wrap-up end of the day event published, but the cash machine is still happening. There is a Friday night event that uh, Quads in the Mud has organized, and on that page, uh, let's see, it's GC, let me see where it is, Alpha 4 X-Ray Romeo Juliet. And on that cash page, there are links to a cash turno tour and uh, streets and trips streets file, and trips. I think. Yeah, there's a, uh, and a bookmark list. So those are the caches that people are planning to do. And uh, Brian Lang also posted there's a Facebook page that has all kinds of details about it. So if you're anywhere near central, south central Washington on Saturday the 25th, coming up real quick. Way well, there's a whole bunch of caches you can go find and probably find a whole bunch of caches out there doing them. That's right. So fun. <laughs> and the chat we, just keeps going. I mean, this yeah. is the thing. <laughs> Weird. Who yeah. name places to geocache in the Northwest? Hump Tulips. Uh, <clears throat> oh yeah. But pronounced yeah. like it looks. I mean, they it's just keep coming in like Wakaya Wakayakim. Wakayakim, right? yeah. Wakayakim. Sweaty. Laschetti. Laschetti? Like Spaghetti? Exactly. Yeah. I, I always call it Spaghetti yeah. Island. Yeah. It's like Pete, Pete Schwetti. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Sawasan? So I don't know. Yeah. Did I say that right? You did. Yeah. Did you say that? Okay. Oquiem and, and... And Chihuila. Chihuila. Yeah. Anyway, they, they just keep coming in. It, yeah. Some of the names are, are hilarious, right? Forks, I joke. <laughs> <laughs> well... Awesome. We've already started here, but let's take a moment to introduce MC3 Cats. Now, if you've watched the podcast before, you probably already recognize him. He's got a great first name of Chris, which I think shows great parentage. I'll let my mom know that. Okay. <laughs> um, and for the next seven days, he's the WSGA president. Yeah. For the next seven, yeah. Short timer. We're, we're perhaps shorter depending on how this podcast goes. <laughs> exactly. It could very well be. Um, so, Chris, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, other than the, the short-termer uh, uh, position you're holding about geocaching and such. Well, I've been caching uh, since 2009, the, near the beginning of the year, and I uh, have been pretty much going at it since then haven't really stopped um i don't know got almost twenty thousand finds uh yeah just been enjoying it meeting some great people of course i got involved with the wsga kind of early on in my geo geocaching career and just kind of stayed with it because i enjoy what the organization has done and um yeah i mean that's that's kind of it really <laughs> Sure, a lot of people already know all that stuff. So, like, probably over the old stuff. <clears throat> yeah, it's always good to to go back and yeah talk about it. Now, tonight we yeah. want to talk about the WSGA Geo Tours. There's multiple that are going mm -hmm. on. Um, yeah. And uh, let's start off with uh, what inspired the WSGA to create these Geo Tours, mm -hmm. and how did you choose the locations for them? Well, we had a, a big anniversary in 2022. It was our 20th anniversary uh, that e last year. And so if you if folks remember our 10th anniversary, we did a, uh, a big geo art uh, series of caches over the south end of Lake Washington. Well, that's where the artwork was. The caches mm -hmm. weren't obviously in the, in the lake. But uh, so we wanted to do something even more special for our 20th anniversary. And so uh, the idea of the tour came up. And uh, so we just kind of thought, hey, that'd be something different that we haven't done. And this is something that we can you know, kind of spread out throughout the state. So that's how uh, it became uh, multiple tours instead of just one. Uh, we were originally going to do one 
uh, and that, and that we were going to go with the whole 20 theme, you know, cause it kind of mm-hmm. seemed appropriate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we were going to have, and we, we still do, we have 20, uh, caches, geo tour caches in each of our seven, uh, chapters throughout the state of Washington. And so that's, that was kind of the, 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 the crux of the tour. So we were going to do one gigantic one. And after starting the setup, we, uh, working with HQ, we kind of got talked into, you know, making them smaller bite-sized mini geo tours. And so instead of one big one, we just chopped it down into seven little bits. So one for each of our chapters. And that's how it, how it got started. Um, and how we did it is we pretty much put our chapter reps in each of those seven chapters in charge of their 20 caches. And basically the idea is, hey, here's your containers. You guys, you know your area better than anybody else. Mm-hmm. Go forth and put them out find interesting places if you want to um uh enlist some help which we definitely encourage people to do that um we didn't expect our our chapter reps to you know uh be a parent to 20 uh geo tour caches and in fact most of our reps um, ended up um, enlisting help and adopted those out to local cashers uh and that's what we ended up doing it was it was actually a lot of fun it was a lot of work but it was also a lot of fun and we're getting a lot of uh, a lot of hits on it people are enjoying it awesome so uh you you kind of explained the the origin story a little bit there um but how long did it take to actually plan and develop the the tour and what were maybe some of the biggest challenges in trying to put this together well, we started, um, I want to say it was, it was definitely in 2022. Um, and it, it, it took a little bit to get going. Uh, there's a ton of stuff that goes into doing a geo tour. Mm-hmm. Um, for us, I mean, it was kind of easy because we had a, the crux of what we wanted to do. Um, and, and every good geo tour should have some sort of theme, you know, gold country has a fantastic, uh, theme up there. So we, you know, our theme was, was pretty straightforward. We, we were, we were shooting for getting, our, our goal was to get people back out, uh, and get out and and visit the state. And so that was really more of a, a sort of a tourism thing. You know, we were coming out of the pandemic and it was like, okay, let's get people to go back out on the road and maybe go out and see places in within within the borders of the state that maybe they haven't been to before. And we figured our our, our local chapter reps know their area better than anybody. They've obviously would cash the heck out of their their territory. So why not have them, you know, take the ball and run with those 20 caches? And that's that's what we did. And, and mainly the only thing I told them was find some interesting places. Maybe there hasn't been a cache in this one area that you really think is cool. Maybe it's got a fantastic view. Maybe it's near some weird oddity that's in that particular area of your, of your chapter and, and try to you know get a cache there so that people will come and see this weird, maybe awesome view or strange formed rock or whatever. You know, I really kind of wanted it sort of open. Um, we also kind of took some, some history a little bit too. So if you've got like a historical area that maybe doesn't get a lot of love, like the cash I put out for the PS chapter was, was basically one of those sort of his, historic, uh, historic road. Um, and so I wanted to highlight that particular area. So it, we basically kind of, kind of gave that framework and said, here, go for it. <laughs> and I think for the most part, they, they did a really good job uh, finding some really interesting places. So mm-hmm. I, I enjoyed the, the few that I've done already have been fantastic. That's great. There's a, that's a lot of caches. So it'll take people a while. Yeah, I see people in the chat are talking about it. It's not just a lot of caches. It's a lot of distance. It is, yeah. <laughs> well, can, yeah, it's it's statewide. Yeah. You know, it, it, the only thing that comes close to this was the the uh, State Parks Geo Tour from a bunch of years oh, back. Yeah. The, the 100, 
for the right uh, Washington State Parks 100th anniversary. Mm -hmm. They did a like a hundred caches and a hundred state parks. Well, you this got to beat. And the WSGA just one up them. Did 120. Yeah, we one up them. Not that we were 20. 140. Sorry. 120. Yeah, they were they were sitting in the meetings and they said, "How many caches should we do? 20? And MC3 Cat says, "Nay." Seven times twenty. Right. <laughs> That's basically it. But we did it differently than than the state parks in that it's not one ginormous geo tour. It's seven bite sized ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was the other thing is, and I'm really glad we got talked into that because, you know, twenty uh, geo tour uh, caches is much easier to do than 140, mm -hmm. and. The way we set it up is you just got to fit complete three of any of our geo tours and we're going to give you a coin, you know, versus having to do 140. And then, you know, it may take you years to do. And then finally you get, you know, you get your little shiny prize at the end, you know? So, mm -hmm. so you know what, this... Chris, though, I was, I was going to say on that note, one of the other things, I mean, absolutely doing the whole 140 and I'm sure you'll talk about the rewards for completing all of them, but because you broke it into seven unique geo tours, it, you don't have to do all 140 to get the souvenir either. Like you get a souvenir for every 20, for every oh, one of the seven geo tours. So mm -hmm. that that's fun too, and that helps keep you motivated. Uh, I find as a you know a, a geocacher going through it. Yeah, and and again, it's not as it's not as daunting because now you're again you're taking it bite sized chunks and you're getting rewarded kind of along the way with those with the uh, with the souvenirs and eventually yeah. you know you get the coin and then you know the idea is hopefully it'll motivate you to go okay now I want to do them all yeah and so we're not we're not just stringing you along we're trying to in a lot of ways trying to motivate you to to get out and see the state and. You know, so far I think it's been turning out pretty well from what I can see. So, <laughs> so I'm pretty happy. Let's see. Somebody said, how does it go? Oh, here it is. Limex says, uh, how does the distance of these geo tours compare to the Utah tour? Mm. Utah had you going all over the state. That's right. This will be similar. I'm not, I'm sure I think Utah might be bigger than Washington. So, um, we but, did the yeah. Utah one. We completed. We've got the jackets from completing that, um, and we're we're uh, three uh, three down, uh, three geo tours down for the WSGA series, and uh, about halfway through the caches, I think we got like seventy two of them found. So making some good headway. Um, but I would say they're comparable in the sense that you have to, for the Utah, you had to visit every county. Um, mm -hmm. I think the WSGA set of geo tours, you don't hit every single county, but boy, you get pretty darn close. Yeah, yeah there's there's we there's some areas of the state that do not have any geo tour caches, particularly the very northwest part of the state. So we're Forks and Hump Tulips in that area oh, over that there. Right. Um, there, there isn't any over over there. Um, you got them on the San Juans though. But we do, yes, we we've made up for that uh, <laughs> with the with the forty eight North uh, tour. They have um, or the North forty eight. They have um, uh, there's three caches uh, on two of the islands over there. So yeah, you're to to qualify, you're going to have to go over to uh, Friday Harbor uh, and get those two caches. And you know you can choose to go over to Orcas Island and get that other one. That's up to you. But uh, you to to quote complete or qualify for three geo tours and, and get this nifty coin you have to find at least 18 caches in each uh or mm -hmm. in three of the uh, geo tours so that one in particular you're going to the island whether you like it or not and actually it's not a bad trip so uh, and i'm with megan i like uh, that what why leave two if you're yeah. doing it get there all the money because i'm gonna do 20 here I agree because, it, and really, the, um, the forty-eight, uh, the North forty-eight one is is fantastic actually because um, they 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 did a really good job of spreading it around. And that chapter, you know, that's basically the you know the the chapter from uh, 
basically the very, very extreme north, north end of Seattle, all the way up to the Canadian border. And most of those caches are fairly close to I-5. For the most part, there's a few that are kind of off to the east. And then, of course, the uh-huh. uh, the the three in the islands there. But um, it's worth it. I mean, the San, San Juan Island, is th- that is worth the trip in itself because there's so much to see and do yeah. over there. There's plenty of uh, adventures to do. Uh, and it's such a neat uh, Friday Harbor, such a neat town anyway. Well, and um, I think that's one of the huge advantages of breaking them up into seven little geo tours mm-hmm. is you could go for a weekend or a week in the, you know, Island County there in the San Juans, go get the geocaches, enjoy your time, and then plan another weekend trip somewhere else and go get the others. 20 caches in a weekend is not difficult at all. No, um, and, and some of the chapters, you can do those in a day. Yes. Um, others, mm, uh, Cascadian chapter in particular, uh, that one is, that one covers, I don't want to say it, the entire real estate of that chapter, but pretty dang close. Yeah. Um, because that one starts, uh, the, the very northern one is almost in Canada. Uh, and then it goes all the way almost to the to Snoqualmie Pass. Was that Lake Osseus, the very southern end of that, and then all the way over to uh, to uh, Snoqualmie Pass. So that's a huge chunk of real estate, and they are spread out. Wet Coaster wants to know: Is there one <laughs> Roberts? No, there is not. Oh, poor I'm Point surpri- Roberts. I'm surprised that one didn't get over there. Um, you guys remember you own that, right? Sometimes I think you get forget. <laughs> Sometimes we forget. <laughs> what what county is that in? Well, that's, I think that's uh, Watcom, I believe. Oh, I don't know. I thought it was in the Fraser River County. I they they was... should just throw a bridge over there and call it, it should, that. It should, just, <laughs> it should just be British Columbia. Just that, I think that would probably Just be... give it to Canada. Well, <laughs> I know. So he's he's going to put an event on Point Robert sometime this year. There you go. Well, Winos, Winos is our, our future WSGA president, so uh, he can do whatever he wants. <laughs> he, wants to be, he could have One a week. WSGA event at Point Roberts. You know, and invite the, the crossing guards over and, you know, give them yeah. something exciting to do, I guess. I don't know. Maybe you can catch the uh, school bus as it leaves Everett and be able to jump on there and get to, uh, get to Point Roberts. Is this the Geo Tour bus? <laughs> <laughs> no creepy old person. Get off the tank bus. <laughs> oh, oh, we have a lot of people who asked, uh, or one person who asked, uh, how many people in the chat are actually cash owners for the WSGA Geo Tour? And uh, several people have answered. So, yeah. Good. Awesome. Yeah, Thank you got, to every uh, one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's. Now, yeah, go ahead. MC3 Cats, when you launched this geo, these seven geo tours, um, how did you balance, you know, the 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 desire for secrecy and and that element of surprise of wow, there's seven, along with trying to get cashers to go out and place these caches for you? Or, well, well, I mean, not for you, but you know, for the geo tour. It it was. Well, it was a little bit of a challenge in that we were trying to launch all seven at the same time. In fact, that's what HQ wanted. So that was our goal, was to try to get them out. And we're dealing with multiple people across the entire state. Mm -hmm. And we had to kick the launch out a couple of times because not all the the, the, uh, places, all the uh, uh, tours were ready to go. We had some that were ready to go right away by the first first deadline and then sorry we're gonna have to kick the can down the road a little bit longer so unfortunately um i i I, thankfully i don't think we lost any uh placed geo tour caches um while we were waiting but it it we really wanted to do this before the uh the beginning of winter and i think we just sort of skated by when we got it launched in november um, so that was kind of a, a challenge, but, you know, just putting something together this big in and of itself is a challenge anyway. Mm-hmm. There's just each, ge- each geo tour is, even though it's small and bite-sized, you still have artwork, you still have 
uh, souvenir artwork you have to present, you have to photos. I mean, it's just a lot of stuff that you have to, to do. And so, you know, it was, it was a challenge all the way around, but it's one of those challenges that I enjoyed and I'm so glad we were able to get it done and uh, people are enjoying it. So there's the, there's the fruit of the labors right there. Exactly. Well, should we flash through some of the owners here? We've Gosh, got, there's so uh, many, yeah. I am. Uh, CRS 98, Peach of Washington, Seabeck Tribe, the overachiever that she is, has two. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lori. I have for one. That. You have one. Yeah. Yeah, there's, and there's plenty more, you know, across the state, of course. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, and, you know, we really appreciate all of the cash owners that stepped up and said, yes, I'll, I'll take a uh, I'll take a container, which they're all the same container, same size. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, do them up however you want, yeah. place yeah. them wherever you want, you know. So it was it was fun. So, I, I, again, the community stepped up as as the community always does. And I'm so glad that we were able to do that for just every geocacher that wants to come and visit our Geo tour. Well, it is a great community, whether they're in the chat tonight or not. Um, appreciate everybody that has participated and helped put them out there. But what about the seekers of the caches? What do you hope people will gain from completing the tour? And have you gotten any interesting feedback from people that have completed a tour or tours? Yeah, so probably the main, the main goal, I think, was to get people back out after the pandemic that was that was really the goal get out and rediscover the the state of washington um so that was really probably the big thing that i wanted to see everybody you know get back out because you know there's there's all these different challenges we all know the challenges of delorme the cities and towns and the county and all those fun things that are out there and you know if you've been caching for a while you've probably completed those or or pretty close to that and you know you've done enough geo tours probably around the area too and so it's like hey let's do something new <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's that was the other nice thing about it so um so from that standpoint that was the goal is to basically to to get people outside again even though it was in the fall when we launched this um we I don't, we didn't have a problem getting cashers out in the fall so and and in terms of um Feedback uh, I've received quite so when the when the passports come in, I actually handle uh, reviewing those and sending the coins out. And I have received a number of sticky notes. In fact, I, yeah, hopefully I've kept them because <laughs> I have a I have a folder here of all the completed geo tours. So I try to be organized with this little project, and. Um, so we've we've received a number of them. I'm trying the one in particular that sticks out in my mind is the is the one from the person who completed the only person I should say who has completed all seven geo tours. Wow. One person has done that so far, and so that's a, yeah, 140 caches that she went out and found during the winter. Yes. Yeah, and I've seen lots of comments that some of those are still under the snow. She went out and found them all. And and the response and the response, she, she sent me like a two sticky note note, <laughs> basically saying, I really enjoyed doing this tour. It has been so much fun. Thank you for putting this. I mean, that's that's paraphrasing it significantly, but but um, and that's just that's just one memorable one. We've had others that have come in with, with the geo tour passports. So uh the, the fact that somebody went out in the dead of winter and did all 140, that's, that's fantastic. I mean, yeah. I wasn't expecting anybody to complete all of them until probably, you know, the spring. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, she went out and did them all in, uh, within a few months of the tour launching. So fantastic. That's impressive. Yeah. I don't know if she was living in her car this whole time. <laughs> she was doing Could be. Having fun anyways from the sounds of it. That. I great. think so. Yeah. yeah. So. Megan says uh, the Indolent Empire uh, caches are still in snow. That's not surprising. I'm sure and there's some uh, Cascadia, Cascadia ones. Yeah. Yeah. Some may, you may have a, a challenge just driving to. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
unless you have a snow cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we're keeping our eye on it because we're we're kind of planning to head towards those Cascadian Inland Empire <laughs> ones as soon as we can. So. Take your MC snow cat. There you go. <laughs> there you now, Limax asked a wonderful question, and this is one that um, everybody should know. If you're an owner of one of the caches in the tour, can you still get the souvenir if you get the other caches? <clears throat> you absolutely can. Um, what needs to be done, well, at least for our tour, <clears throat> this will work with other tours, but with our tour, if you are a cache owner, and you have completed all the caches in that tour, except yours, you need to email uh, the WCA or, or me. And what I will do is I will reach out to our contact at HQ, who is in charge of the tours, and say, okay. so-and-so cacher has a cache in XYZ Geo Tour. Um, they have completed all but the one that belongs to them. Can you please award this person with the souvenir and they mm -hmm. will take care of that. Nice. So that's how you get your tour if you're a cash owner, because hey, we're not gonna, we shouldn't penalize a cash owner <laughs> in our geo yeah. tour if they've done them all, but but one. So that's that's the workaround and they are more than happy to to do that, so. That's a really good question and good to know the answer to that. Cause yeah, that's, yeah. I hadn't thought about that, but it makes a mm -hmm. lot of sense. Um, Mr. Three Cats, mm -hmm. um, obviously 140 caches spread out across all of Washington state is a lot, uh, to keep on top of. Now you did distribute out the responsibility of placing these caches, but, uh, we all know, and, you know, particularly when the weather gets adverse, it's a little tough to get to some of them. How does the WSGA ensure that the caches will continue to be maintained and kept in good condition, especially the, the remote uh, or challenging location ones, because, um, you know, as, as a visitor out of state, it's a bit of an ordeal for me to get to any of these locations. It is a dedicated trip. Um, and I kind of don't want to do the trip if I'm not going to find one of the caches out of 20. <laughs> well, good news is you have a two grace there. Um, but, but I want the souvenir, Chris. But you want the souvenir. Yeah. So we have uh, handed out some cash container, you know, supplies to our reps. Um, so, and I've already had one in the Puget Sound chapter uh, asked me about uh, replacement uh, containers, and our rep has one to ha hand off. So that's one. So if we have a you know, for, for, for those who are the cash owners of our uh, GeoTour caches, they can go right to the chapter rep and uh, get replacements and get those taken care of. For those that, for the others that are owned by the chapter, um, the same thing the chapter rep would at that point be involved with, with taking care of those caches. Again, they know their region. They're the ones who place them most likely. Uh, if they didn't, you know, send them out to, to someone to adopt, which I think most of the uh, chapters have done that. I know the Puget Sound pretty much has all, uh, we don't, there's not one Puget Sound, a WSA Puget Sound uh, chapter uh, account that has any of the caches. They're all, they're all delved out. And I think for the most part, that's how the other uh, uh, chapters have done that. So um, it's, it's up to the, obviously the individual CEO to take care of that. And again, if they're, if they need a new container, I got a whole bunch of those white, you know, plastic screw top uh, containers uh, that we can make sure that the reps, if the reps run out of supplies, we can get those to them. Okay. I got to ask because <laughs> I found quite a number of those containers. What, what were they from? What kind of containers are they? Actually uh, those were purchased through Uline. So they're, okay. we just, we just bought a whole bunch of them. <laughs> okay. So they're, they're not repurposed from some. No. We were no, like, we, is this baking soda or is it like, no, no, what was no, it here? Peanut no. butter. He they, eats a lot of peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or face cream jar. It's actually something, a little bit yeah. bigger than a face cream jar, but uh, like Noxema or something. But, so but basically, we, like we went to Uline and 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 uh, bought bulk and actually uh, saved a little bit of money and did it that way. So we have extras, of course. So awesome. Yeah. 
So there you go. Not repurposed. We that would be a lot of repurposed containers yes, if would, you think yeah. about it. Gotta love that peanut butter. <laughs> okay, everybody. We're all having peanut butter and jelly That's right. in our next event meetings for the next <laughs> month. I have mentioned that he had to get a replacement from the chapter rep. It was a painless experience. Awesome. So. <clears throat> See, as though I think he knows the uh, chapter rep fairly well. So I would hope it would have been painless. I would hope so. <clears throat> it was painful. We need to talk to that chapter rep. <laughs> you should. You definitely should. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, where, where are we? So you've got a lot of experience now with geo tours and planning and organizing and placing. Do you have any advice to somebody else who says, "Ah, gosh, I want to make my own geo tour too"? Maybe there's a few key factors that they should consider to plan and implement a successful geo tour like yours. Well, I think what you what you really want is a good theme um, and and an idea for what you want to do. I mean, there's so many great ones out there. Uh, I think one of the longest running ones uh, is down in Southern Washington near, uh, near the Columbia river there. It's that Sasquatch series. And Big and that one was, was pretty cool. Cause kind of all around Bonneville and they're h- hanging out near these, these Sasquatch wood sculptures, which is, which is pretty cool. I mean, what a great That's idea. A I like that so, one. That one was was really well. It, I, I'm surprised it's still going this long because I, I got to think it was one of the first ones outside of the uh, GOHQ's uh, one that they did. Um, so obviously creativity is great um, or th- have a really good theme. Ours was pretty basic, 20, you know, 20 years of geocaching, 20 containers and all seven of our chapters get out and see the state. Um so, you know, have a good theme. Gold Country is another fantastic one. Again, mm-hmm. I love what they've, I, I mean, that's the only one I know of that where they've actually made books for their geo tours. It's just yeah. phenomenal. So they're, they've got a, a varying themes going throughout their geo tour, which is, which is fantastic. One of these days I'm going to get up there and do it. Um, so, yeah, I would say location, 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 creativity, and a theme. Um, go with that. If you can do that, bring people to some interesting locations, you know, in the area that you're, you're focusing the tour on. I mean, I think you're going to get a lot of, uh, a lot of big smiles and favorite points, Mm -hmm. you know, for your tour. Um, that's, that's the advice I can give. Plus HQ, um, Gear Guru is is the uh, main contact over there uh, for the geo tours. They've got a wealth of information uh, in their geo tour portal. Um, he's a great person to reach out and ask as well if you've mm-hmm. got questions or you're thinking about doing it. He, you know, he can walk you through the process. I mean, there's it's a lot of work. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna yeah. sugarcoat anything, but you know, the time that you put into it come up with a great theme and great locations you know people are going to go it's it's like field of dreams build it they'll come <laughs> same thing with the geo tours yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right now it's my understanding that uh geocaching headquarters provides data on how the geo tour itself is performing do you have any recent data from hq that maybe you could share with us and tell us how how people are liking it. What is, what's some of the feedback? Yeah. So one of the neat things about being a geo tour organizer is you, you can uh, receive uh, statistical documentation from, from HQ, which of course a lot, of, most of it is, is private and you're not supposed to share the reports and all that. However, I can give you some basic information, a lot of which you can go right to the individual geo tour pages uh, and see them. But, um, for our tour now, a lot of this data is from January, which is the first and only time so far that I've, uh, uh, requested the, uh, the statistical info, but we've had, um, as of January, we've had a total of, I gotta find it, um, 5,220, uh, found at logs for all seven of the chapters now i've got it actually broken down by by each chapter um since they are individual tours you get individual stats which is nice 
Um, probably the, the one that's been visited the most out of all seven is definitely the Olympic Peninsula. So, uh, so a big round of applause for, for Josh uh, and Seabeck Tribe Lori for working on that tour. Uh, it's, it's got the most favorite points and the most visits. So hats off to you guys. Um, as favorite points go, the entire all seven have had 508 favorite points awarded for the caches in the tour. Uh, the big winner again uh, is the OP with 158 uh, favorite points awarded uh, for the caches in that in that tour. Um, let's see. Uh, as I said, we've had one person complete all seven. Um, we've had. 18 people or 18 different cashers uh, complete at least three of the tour uh, geo tours and have awarded the coin. Sounds like uh, Land Monkey is going to be number 19. <laughs> as soon as MC3 Cats checks his mailbox. Yeah, that's right. So there's there's some updated info right there. There you go. And then we've had um, besides U.S. and Canadian cashers, we've had three other. Uh, cashers from three other countries um, actually complete at least or find at least one of the geo tour caches. Uh, and that would be from Sweden, Germany, and Australia. Wow. wow. That's pretty yeah. impressive considering it was after the 20th anniversary. Yeah. Event. Yeah. yeah. You know, cool. Huh? <laughs> Very cool. That's awesome. Well, yeah. hopefully it brings, I mean, I, I always look at geo tours similar to the way I look at adventure labs and that it's, it's designed to bring people to your area and show mm -hmm. off the best parts of your area. And well, that sounded a lot ruder than I meant, but of uh, the area you live, <laughs> that you want to invite people to visit there and, and experience some of the unique sights and sounds, et cetera. And, um, you know, you talked about the, the OP series and we, that was the first one uh, of the three that we've completed. That was the first one we completed and really, really enjoyed the trip down there. Um, some really unique locations. It gave us an opportunity to go and visit a little island we never even knew existed. Um, yeah. And uh, spent the day. Like we were planning, like, uh, I guess we'll pop onto this island, get the next ferry back. And we're like, nah, we're spending the day here. Like it was um, just an amazing, amazing location. So um, really, really enjoyed uh, the whole experience so far. Um, but yeah, I think, I guess where I was going with that originally is that, you know, given the idea that they're intended to bring people to hear that you have brought, you know, a small number of people from some other mm -hmm. countries and, you know, Canada is another country and I'm sure you'll get a growing number as the weather warms up of Canadians coming down mm -hmm. and uh, trying to at least get through three of them. And with some dedicated time on the West side of the Cascades, <laughs> you can get three. Um, you can possibly get four. Um, mm -hmm. A little bit of extra traveling in there, but uh, um, definitely, just definitely worth it. And again, you know, Chris, congrats to you and the team and all the volunteers who've put it out and put together a great way to encourage people to come back to Washington or visit some of these places for the first time and get to see a lot more of the state. Well, one of the other things we did is we we really kind of limited the difficulty and terrain on all of these two everything we, we capped it at two cougar and mountain Ever <laughs> cougar mountain yeah we had we had one rogue one uh <laughs> but we only have one puzzle cache in the entire 140 cache series here uh inland empire i think has four letterbox hybrids um and then we have uh well maybe three or four multi caches um, in the, in the tour. And that's, that's really it. Most of them are traditionals. There is nowhere it goes. I'm just going to be upfront about that. I, I still wanted to do one, but I, 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 you know, uh, reeled back in temptation, if you will, <laughs> and just put a traditional one out. Uh, so there's nowhere it goes. There's no one, one. And I think that, uh, that puzzle one that's over in the OP, as a matter of fact, that one was was actually not horrible in terms of, you know, pounding your head trying to solve. So really, you know, this was put out so that anybody can find these. We weren't trying to be difficult and put out, you know, just ridiculous hard caches. We want people to find them. We want people to complete the tour. 
and have fun doing it. And that I, I think we hit hit the mark on that. At least I feel that we have. So nice, nice. MC Three Cats, thank you for joining us this evening. Now, if folks wanted to reach out and ask you questions, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, through the the geocaching me- messenger, I would say for now that's probably the best, especially since I'm, I will be stepping down, like I said, as a WSGA rep. So, I mean, you can certainly contact the WSGA through our website, uh, WSGA um, uh, our dot org, or just go to our website. It's the easiest mm-hmm. thing. I have a friend, a fuzzy friend here. Speaking of cats. <laughs> um, that would probably be the two best ways to get a hold of me if you got questions on anything. Perfect. And folks, thank you for tuning in tonight. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Caching in the Northwest. Indeed. And also thanks to our corporate Denali level sponsors. That would be Land Sharks, L A N D S H A R K Z dot C A, and Gold Country Geotourism. Uh, visit Gold Country dot com so check both of those out lots of geocaching experiences and supplies and everything you need to have a great adventure um and a reminder that we want to thank all of our faithful denali level supporters that's land sharks gold country geotourism team squirrel groovy owl and cashly the geocaching app folks if you want to know more about supporting this here podcast well just head on over and click that patreon link on the cachingnw.com website and i promise each week i totally <laughs> randomize there's sure. a button that randomizes the however patrons <laughs> however tonight the first patron is mc3 cats <laughs> <laughs> that's random sure number one. <laughs> ah and you're number one in our hearts <laughs> no we love them all let's see there's also hacker doc and Flagman, and you dak Whidbey Island the Gal, Kev MacD, Geo Nav Pro, Trexer, Green Words, Subway Mark, Sprouter, Dora Moore, Tick Magnet, Just Finding Our Way, Kennel Barb, J Car, Coors Gut, Rar 285, <laughs> Wino Seattle, B Pendragon, Just Carlo. He's a new one, by the way. Wet Coaster. Hanteus. Beach of Washington. Segeho. Team Noltex. Keats 94. Fairwood West. The Camp Clan. The Limax. The Genies. Boomer 365. GSM times 2. Utox. Two Rocks. CRS 98. Kid Vegas 19. Honors. LG 9000. Skyhawker. Gia Caches. Hemnerf. Ari 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Log work. Alarobrick. Gas Station Tuna. Seabeck Tribe. And another new sponsor, another new patron family member here. Read the glow off the start of the show. Birder and Geocacher, BC Rock Crawler. All right. Thank you, all the patrons. Thank you, MC3 Cats, for joining us. And thank you, everybody in the chat, for contributing to another episode of Caching the Northwest. Folks, thanks for taking the time to listen to this episode of Cashing in the Northwest. Your support helps keep the quality shows coming. If you like the show, click the Patreon link on the CashingNW.com website. Now, if you didn't like the show, let us know what you want to talk about. In either case, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and more. Subscribe and give us a review. Now, if you were in a restaurant, you would tip. If you were in a live audience, you would clap. And that has happened. But since you're on a podcast, leave us a free, fast, fabulous, fantastic five-star review. You can also call 253-693-TFTC and leave us a comment, ask us a question, help us with gas money anytime of the day Mm -hmm. or night, or a drone to fly our phone up. 
And of course, you can email us at feedback at cashingnw.com. Join us every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Pacific for a live show and chat. The show is produced by Chris Humphenauer, Jim Paulwitz, Jay Kennedy, and Brian Lang. The show's licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license, copyright 2023 by Chris Humphenauer. Folks, I ask you to stay tuned for The After Show. The After Show. Wow. When does that take place? When um, does that take place? On shortly. Tuesdays. Stay tuned. Oh. Let's see. Let's go back up to some podcast drinking, if you don't mind. Oh, yes, please. please. Uh, Subway Mark has a Smithwick's. <laughs> Nothing like a Smitty's after St. Patrick's Day. Oh, absolutely. Amen. The Smithwick's on St. Patrick's Day as well. Um, just oh. Carlos enjoying an Nanaimo Bar Imperial Porter from Vancouver Island Brewery. Oh, I know this group loves Nanaimo bars. Oh, man. Yeah, that is oh, that man. is a sweet porter. That one. Uh, boy, I'm that jealous. Is, that is definitely man. a dessert here. <laughs> Just Carlos, dude. I am. In, I'm jealous. <laughs> Climax is dehydrated. <laughs> <laughs> well, you need to drink more. As are most go. of the podcast drinkers. Yeah. Brian Lang has a Sleeman honey, Sleeman? Yeah. Honey Sleeman. brown lager. I wanted to say a honey brown badger, but. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, that, that does not go down quite as smoothly. <laughs> I think that and we don't care. Yeah. Once you get it down, though, it's, it's over. <laughs> oh, let's see. Oh. Whito Seattle has a Weller E.H. Taylor single barrel B.I.B. bourbon. Nice. That's uh, that's a pretty special bourbon. Nice. Dang. And BC Rock Crawler is just water tonight. Good for you, BC Rock Crawler. Uh, that's when. It, that's what's in this. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, Cole Kino just threw one in tonight, or at the tail end there. Oh, missed it. Podcast drinking. There you go. Incline Cider, Cider Company, Company Marion Berry. Marion Berry. Marion Berry. Wow. wow. What's that's... a Marion Berry? You have to Google um, this. Oh, well, gee, that's a another Mary. Oregon thing, isn't it? Marion Marys. Did I pronounce <laughs> it wrong? No, you no. get it right. Marion Marys, right? <laughs> I know. Subway Mark can talk about it since he's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a berry. It's a it's an Oregon berry, I believe. At least that's what I understand. Yeah. Says, um, says it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Mariners use that type of cup last uh last year that you mentioned that uh yeah mc3 cats is drinking from so he got that cup when i took him to the kraken game look at all the relationships going on here game. yeah you had a kraken good time oh yeah and, and the kraken game of course you of course you will <laughs> in the crack house in the crack house that's what they should call that yeah oh i think they it's not a climate pledge arena whoa yeah <laughs> Very politically correct. Okay, that's true though. Land monkey, this this Black. one's for you. Les, Lesquiti. Ah, I always say Lesquiti. Lesquiti Island. There you go. The U is silent. When my parents owned the campground and store there. Oh wow. So BC Rock Crawlers' parents used to own the campground and store there. The draft dodgers would ask where the ferry for Lesquiti Island was. Ah, so that's how you'd know. So <laughs> I've never called it Lesquiti. I always said Lesquiti. Like Paschetti, but uh, but I was also wrong. It's Lesquiti. There you go, Lesquiti. I'm gonna have to educate, educate my parents because they taught me to say it wrong. <laughs> See, <laughs> you've learned something tonight. You can all go home and feel better. Well, you guys are almost all home, so you I, can feel better about yourselves. I already felt pretty good about myself. So okay, <laughs> all good. But thank you. Now you just feel better about yourself. Yeah. There you go. Is that even possible? Don't tell <laughs> Mrs. Monkey. Won't be able to get my head through the door. <laughs> It'll be our little secret. Oh, my right. yeah. and No, one, no other... one else will know. Okay. All right. Uh, more well, info about Marion Berry, a cross between a blackberry and a raspberry. Um, Subway Mark told us that, and I think Brylang told us that as well. So there we go. Yes. There you go. Yeah, they make pies out of it. And it's So it's is that big... like... Like it's not a berry that happens, like its own berry that happens to be both a blackberry and a raspberry, or or is it? Or is it like just if we take 
blackberries and raspberries and put them together, we'll call it Marionberry, like Bumbleberry. <laughs> I, I don't. Be, I don't know yeah. if it's naturally occurring or like, if it was, you know, grafted like, somehow. Yeah, like a hybrid berry or something. Interesting. Subway Mark says, "Yeah, well, you just had that up there, named after the county he lives in." Marion and county. obviously, why no Seattle? Right after the Marionberry conversation, he says, "I brought it to Abbotsford when I was at Geo Woodstock. Got six of them, six of the berries, and declared them at the border." <laughs> That's obvious. Unlike some <laughs> others, I think he means the <laughs> bourbon, but yeah, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like that. Unlike some others, yeah. I could imagine what he was talking about there. But, mm, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, Subway Mark says the the Marion berry is its own berry. It's a hybrid. Uh, um, um, Iham says it's a hybrid. Oh. Developed at OS at uh, be Oregon State University, I guess. Yeah. Yep, Go exactly. Ducks. Okay. Yeah, right. they're a bunch of quackers down there. Anyway. You know, if Mama Blackberry and Daddy, <laughs> Daddy raspberry, raspberry love, love each, each other. other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Wet Coaster. <laughs> that paints a perfect picture, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. It really does. Interesting. I I heard. I think the first time I heard about Marion Berries was on the way to Mount Rainier, so that's what I associate it with. But anyway, well, I always associate with Oregon, and and obviously, I guess that's the right assumption there. The great there you association, because I'd never heard of it until I visited uh, some relatives of my wife's that lives in west side of Portland, and they were all about Mary and Barry. I'm like, what the heck is that? <laughs> oh, and I just want to no, I, I want to say I've been I've been corrected once again. The uh, mascot for uh, uh, OSU is the oh, beavers, beavers, not the ducks. The ducks is U of O. Yeah. Yes. Correct. You guys got too many universities. I can't keep them straight. When when you get your Oregon classes training from Subway Mark, you'll get it all straightened out. We'll get it mm-hmm. straight. Well, it was Heather that initially corrected me. So it's got to say. There you go. There you go. PSU is beavers, not ducks. Oh, well, she accidentally typed PSU. She meant OSU. OSU. Yeah. There you go. There you go. There it is. OSU is the Beavers. University of Oregon is the Ducks. Awesome. Thank you, Eric. You guys are so good to us. Thank you so much. Hey, folks, thank you so much for listening. And until next week, get out and get caching in the Northwest. What's up?